Good morning. Good morning. Hey, they're starting to come in. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You are here with the Nicholsons today, coming live from our kitchen table. Live. Live and in person. <laughs> you get two for the price of one today. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Hey, Dave. Hey, Debbie Terry. And hey, hello, Dana. Dana and Danielle. Wow, I'm not good at looking at the comments, but I got my partner here with me, so maybe he is. Morning, Doug. Hey, Sue Renner. Hey, Gladys. Good morning. Hey, Karen. Oh, it's good to see our friends, Dan David and Aaron Hinton. Hey, man. Hey, Amanda. Paula. Hey, Paula. And Heather Dyer. Good morning, our good friend, Heather. Good it's good to see all of you today and, uh, and to be together. And uh, it's it's definitely January, yeah. And we are fasting and praying. We are. Yeah. And I, and, I was gonna say. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, Kelly was talking about how she. Oh yeah, I get up at like 4:50 a.m. and I'm like, what? Not me. I am not a morning person. I only get up early if I am catching a flight for vacation. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. Hey, by the way, do you notice my cup? Yeah, this is my new cup. I love it. This is Kate's artwork. This is what she gave me for Christmas. Yeah, I love it. So anyway, Kate's not up yet, but yeah, let's hope but she stays asleep. Hope she stays asleep. But anyway, good morning, guys. Everybody, it's really great to see you. Yeah. Hey, if you haven't gotten your um, <clears throat> Hi, prayer Betty. guide right here, um, remember you can text twenty twenty three to seven four zero seven three nine. 4242 and you can get a digital copy and you can it's got a lot of good stuff in it so mm -hmm. you want to make sure you get one or you can pick one up at church on Sunday all right so today we're going to be talking about out with fear and so as we were uh, preparing for this I, I wanted to look up what the definition of fear was and the definition of fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Hmm. And what I know is that the Lord desires us to live free from fear. And a lot of times when I'm feeling fearful or anxious, there's a few verses I wanted to share with you that are my go-to verses. And the first one is Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I also love 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And Philippians 4, 6 through 9. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Mm. And I was, when we were thinking about fear, I was trying to remember a time where I felt the most afraid. And one came to mind really quickly. It's when we took our RV trip to um, South Dakota over the summer. It was in July. And we went to the Badlands National Park. And um, around the Badlands, we camped really close. Like we could see them from our campsite. And around that area, there are like no trees, mm, no bushes, nothing. no nothing. Like nothing. Our, we were camping in our in our RV in a field. In a field. <laughs> with other RVs around, but nothing else, nothing else was around. And so one night, um, we heard on the news or whatever, that a storm was coming and we could actually see it coming from, for like an hour. We're waiting for the storm. It's like 11 o'clock at night. We hear this storm is coming. And, um, so I decided I better hurry up and take my shower and get it in for the day. But anyway, that's not the point. Um, the point is we could see it coming towards us. And when it hit, I mean, it really hit. I couldn't believe 
the way that our RV was rocking and rolling and I felt like we were up on two wheels going back and forth and I knew for sure, I knew for sure we were going to tip over and I was just, we're just standing there and, and yeah, our, it was, it was 75 mile an hour straight winds. Yeah. 75. Hitting, hitting, hitting our, hitting our RV. And we're just, and I'm standing there and Kate's there and Bob's there and we're just all kind of like, I don't know, paralyzed for a moment thinking, what are we going to do? There's nowhere to go. This is it. This is our shelter and it's rocking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so, um, Bob grabs us and he moves us to the middle of the RV where, cause we were standing like right in front of this big window. And so he moves us to the middle of the RV and he starts to pray and he prays and he prays and he prays and it feels like forever. And finally the wind subside, the storm kind of passes. It's still going on a little bit, but that 10 minutes of pure fear was over and you know mm. the adrenaline's pumping and um, our parents were with us too and so the first thing a girl does you know after <laughs> she prays with her family out of fear is call her mom and so that's what I did I called my mom and I'm like oh my gosh mom that was so crazy can you believe how bad we were rocking and rocking and and she said well yeah that was pretty bad we weren't rocking as as much and I was thought well that's crazy and as I thought about it I remembered that their RV has at the bottom of their RV, they have stabilizers that come down mm. on the ground and it stabilizes their RV. So like when you walk through our RV, you can feel everybody walking, you know, it's moving as you walk, but in their RV, they have the stabilizers and you can't, you know, when they walk around, you can't feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and that is absolutely true. And, and we were, we were scared. I think the funny part of that story was we were in the middle of the RV and Kate was looking up at Sarah and I, and she goes, daddy, mommy, how are we going to sleep tonight? <laughs> and, uh, we're like, we're not sleeping now. This is 1230 at night when this all hit. And, uh, but it was truly, uh, one of the most, uh, terrifying moments, uh, that I know I've, I remember. Um, but you know, when Sarah brought that up to me, because you know, at first, when when my mother in law said, "Well, yeah, we didn't we didn't rock like that," um, and at first I thought, "Well, it's because we were in front of them, right? We were we were the wind block, maybe." Um, but uh, when she brought up the stabilizer part, it really made a lot of sense to me uh, because they do uh, they have a, a newer, nicer unit than we do, and um, and they the, the stabilizers do a do a fantastic job. And, and I got to thinking about that. And I know that some of you, even on this uh, live feed this morning, um, I know your stories. Um, I've known some of the, some of the truly uh, terrifying, fearful moments that you have experienced. Um, you've shared those with me um, and other people in my past as well. And um and I want you to know that one of the reasons why Sarah's analogy really resonated is because I think of these individuals that have been able to weather storms um, and the one common denominator among all of these individuals is their feet are firmly planted and their mind is fully steadfast on Christ. That is absolutely true and they are stabilized in Christ, and uh, and literally that dependence upon Him um, literally drives out the fear, and so um, that was a a great way. I think Sarah uh, learned a lot, and we did too through that. And so those of you who have really, uh, I know your story and appreciate your ministry to me and to Sarah because you've been a testimony to us because you have demonstrated that no matter what, I'm trusting Christ. So our verse today is 2 Timothy 1, 7, and I wanted to read it in a couple different um, translations. Um, the first translation is NIV. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And the New Living Translation says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. In the ESV it says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Hmm. So um, when thinking about that verse, now a little bit of background about the, the two letters to Timothy. 
uh, first of all, Paul was in prison. Um, and But Timothy was a mentee of Paul. Um, Paul discipled him. Uh, and Timothy is now a young pastor uh, in, the, in, in Ephesus. And, um, but what's happening, and this is very common, um, especially when you're a young guy uh, just starting out, uh, sometimes individuals don't take you seriously, and sometimes they, uh, they put you down because you're young. In fact, uh, in chapter 4 of First Timothy, verse 12, Paul actually says, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, right? But be an example. But then here in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, <clears throat> Paul emphasizes this whole idea that we are not, we don't, we don't serve a God who allows us to live in fear. In fact, it says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit that has power and love and self-discipline. And what this means is the fact that when you think about a leader, and here's Paul exhorting Timothy to be a leader not captivated by fear, and he, and he says power, love, and self-discipline. And here's what this means. It doesn't mean that you come across um, confident or you have to be flashy and bold and uh, slick, all that. In fact, that turns people off. But what what Paul is talking about is that you live in the confidence that God has your back and you live in the confidence that you are walking with him completely and you are utterly dependent upon him. What it means in the love area is that love basically takes two components, care and concern, and brings them together. And what means what that means is is that the relationships that you have, uh, the interactions, the deals that you make, uh, the decisions that you make with others or yourself, whatever, you combine care and concern, and people know above all else that you love them and that you have their back. And then the last one is self discipline, and the idea is Paul is essentially telling Timothy, "Hey man, keep a cool head." right? Don't get emotional. Don't allow the, the actions of others to incite you, but allow yourself to be firmly rooted. And, uh, and I will tell you right now, when you think about leadership development, and a lot of us have gone through how many leadership courses in our life, right? That's the best advice you're ever going to get right there is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Yeah, Paul's words were an encouragement to Timothy to stay the course, to don't give up, to keep going. Um, but he couldn't do it on his own. He was to look to God. Hmm. And the promise is, if he does that, he will have strength, love, and self-discipline. In other words, God will give, us, give him everything he needs to get through whatever's in front of him. And that same promise is true for us today. And I don't know what's in front of you. It might be something really scary, difficult, uncomfortable, intimidating. Uh, it might even feel like it's impossible to get through. And on your own, it very well might be. But with God, you can and you will. So the meaning of 2 Timothy 2.17 is to look to God for strength. So how do we apply it in our life? I think what we do is we focus on God and we lean into his spirit. And that means that you have to invest time in your relationship with God. And you can do that by um, connecting with him regularly. You need to study God's word. You need to have prayer walks or like me, you can pray in the shower. Um, I do a lot of praying in the shower. You can pick up a devotional, go for a drive, go for a hike. The point is just spend time with Jesus. Mm. And not only that, <clears throat> but um, you still need that time with Christ that Sarah was talking about. And that's so important. But also we can't forget to connect to others as well. And uh, one of the, the best parts of being a Christian is uh, that relationship with Christ, and but also your relationship with your other brother and sisters. A uh, little plug here, shameless plug, uh, Grow Group start February 13th, and there's going to be information about that. Join a Grow Group. I was just talking to a brother at church on Sunday, 
and he was explaining to me, he says, hey, you know, I really want to get back into a grow group. I disconnected from a grow group and I don't feel less connected and I really want to get back. And, uh, and that really helps a lot. So all these things are so vital to bring stability um, and strength into our life. Yeah. So, Awesome. Well, will you pray for Ready us? Ready to pray? Yep. So guys, we love you and want you to know that. And, uh, and thank you for your encouragement to us. And let's pray. And I'm going to pray for every single one of us that we will enter whatever is awaiting us today that we will completely give it to the Lord and we will allow him to uh, work with us and plow the way for us and fight for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for um, the fact that you've given us literally everything that we need to be um, a person that stands firmly rooted, knowing that, Lord Jesus, that you have uh, our back. Lord, a lot of us sometimes when these moments of terror and fear and overwhelming anxiety overcome us, um, it is so natural for us to lean in to all of the, the emotion and all of the things that are going inside of our body at that moment. It's easy to, Lord, allow these things to literally overwhelm us like a tsunami. But Lord, I pray because this, this idea of what we're talking about in 2 Timothy 1 it is really talking about intentionally going against what we are naturally programmed to do and intentionally saying, I am a person who has power and love and self-control. And Lord, I pray that we will train our minds, our hearts, everything that we do to remind ourselves that Lord, you are there with us. All we have to do is do what First Peter says, right? Lord, it says, cast your care upon the Lord and he, for he cares for you. And all of these verses that we have at our disposal, I pray, Lord, that we will meditate on them, that we will uh, write them all around us. We will put them around us, remind us when we get up and when we go to bed. And Lord, I pray that, that the word of God, uh, as it says in, in Hebrews, that the word of God is living and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword and it penetrates all the way down into our very marrow. So Lord, I pray that the word of God will absolutely be our go-to and our, uh, our dependence, knowing that you love us, you are there for us, you're not afraid, you are fighting for us and you have our back. That is our prayer. Lord, we thank you for Sarah and her, uh, Lord, her careful handling of this. And it's been such an encouragement. And thank you for those that are online today. We're so appreciative of our friends and, uh, and those, Lord, who are walking this life with us. And we're so excited about what you're going to do in these 21 days of prayer and fasting. We give this day to you and may you have your will and may you have your way in every aspect. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us this morning. And uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow again at 7 a.m. And I think you're going to be hearing from Obadiah. Yep. Yeah, that's right. All right. Love you guys. See you. Have a great day. Yeah. Take care. Okay. All of our, yeah, hey, oh, yeah. Hit that button.